What's going on? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone, and today we're going to talk about the history of Telecaster wiring. We're going to do a demo of each of the major wiring harness configurations throughout the years from the beginning until now, and then we're going to talk about some kind of myths and a couple of legends that eh, I don't know how much water they hold. So uh, today is pretty cool. Well, first of all, we're inside because it's raining outside. I like to shoot outside, but you can't beat the rain, and I gotta get the video done. So, we're shooting inside. We're gonna use as a demo today, when we get to the demo portion, we're gonna use uh, our fence post caster. So we, you know, you remember the video where we put a neck and stuff on a fence post. So we took a lot of those parts and that concept and made an actual fence post caster telecaster. And so uh, we're going to use this guitar to demo it. Uh, we're going to use it through the Kemper with a 65 reverb profile. Um, that's the same profile I always use on all my demos. And so that'll be very fendery. So let's go ahead and talk about the history of Telecaster wiring. It's really interesting. First of all, we're, we're not going to do the, the one pickup Esquire. I think that video needs to be its own video. So pre two pickup, single pickup Esquire, we're gonna, that's gonna be its own video. We're also only gonna deal with wiring schemes that were in factory Fender guitars. We might do another video if you want me to on other modifications and mods and different you know, various things that we would do to a Telecaster to change the wiring from factory. So this is just the factory stuff. The very first one was actually a two pickup Esquire and it was only made for 50 years, no, 50 and 51. It was made for 1950 and 1951 and it was your no caster, broadcaster, Esquire, you know, whatever they called it at that time because of course you do the history, you know, Googling on that. But basically, um, this was a really interesting circuit. It was only used for these two years. A lot of people don't even know about it, but I think it's a really important circuit to understand uh, because of what music was doing back then too, right? So we have uh, a setup with 250K pots, okay? We have the three-way switch and we have two knobs, but the knobs don't do the same thing. There's also another 0.05 microfarad capacitor that goes from, uh, inside there and then there's a 15k resistor inside there. So this is the way this three position switch worked in your very first two pickup Telecaster style guitar. When you push the switch all the way back we're going to have a blend knob where we can actually have the bridge pickup and then as we bring this knob up we blend the neck pickup back in which was interesting and then we come to the middle position here and then we just have uh, the neck pickup by itself with no blend, no tone. You notice there's no tone control on the guitar at all. And then we come forward and that engages that other capacitor that gives us kind of this neck bassy tone. Well, here's an interesting thing. In 1950 and 51, there were no bass guitars. So if you're electrifying a band, you either had an upright bass and you're trying to figure out a way to mic that and electrify that, or you would play the Telecaster with this in the forward position and you would do your bass lines. Here's a demo of what this sort of thing sounds like. And then we blend the neck pickup back in. That was tip that was more or less your middle pickup position. And then the middle position was the neck pickup by itself. Remember, no tone control. And then the forward position was with that capacitor engaged where you could have like your run your bass lines. So 
So you got to remember that we were working with no bass guitar here. So that's a really interesting circuit. Something that's very interesting about Mr. Leo Fender is he apparently didn't like change very much, which is probably part of the reason why guitar players don't like change. I don't know, maybe it's related. I'm not really sure. We won't get into the philosophy and psychology of all that. But the bottom line is he didn't really like change. But a man named Bill Carson, who played in a swing band, said, hey man, I need a tone control. Like, I need to be able to turn the tone up and down, vary my bass and treble. But remember, in 1952, there still weren't really basses. So you still had to have that bass circuit. So the kind of in-between circuit of the early one and the one we know now is what they call the Blackguard circuit or the Dark circuit. And what that was was pretty much uh, same thing except we varied it just a little bit. So if we put our switch all the way back in the back position, we've got the bridge position with a tone control. Very, pretty much exactly what we have today, right? Um, then we put this up in the middle and now we have the neck position with a tone control. And then we push it forward and then we have the neck position only with no tone control with that bassy cap. And it sounds like this. middle is going to be neck position with a tone control. And then this is going to be your dark circuit on just the neck pickup. kind of fun to put some like crazy is the more gain you put on it it sounds awesome I love this <laughs> so like with a fuzz or something it's really kind of cool for modern playing so that wiring scheme went from 1952 to somewhere in 1950, uh, 1967. You gotta remember that um, in 19, was it 1964, 65, somewhere in there, Fender uh, sold, Leo Fender sold his company to CBS. He remained as a consultant for a couple of years. That, that period is kind of my favorite in like vintage Fender, uh, the transition period there you can go from 1965 ish to 1967 and open up a bunch of old guitars and see something a little different every time one of the things i find interesting well we'll get into that in a minute uh because of that transition period you know fender was really trying to hold on to that whole dark circuit he he played with this uh neck capacitor value just a little bit over the years it changed a little bit you know just to be as effective as possible I think he, you know depending on um, depending on how he was doing it so he, he messed with that a little bit when he really wanted to hang on to that but uh, when he sold it to Fender and then shortly after that he quit being a consultant for them and that neck dark position went away so 67 ish so um, and I say ish because it depends on the guitar and like what part of the year, like it, you can, you can see a 67 with a dark, you can see it without it. I've seen them both ways. So after that, then we pretty much get what we have now, neck, middle, bridge, volume, tone, pretty standard stuff. <laughs>
Uh, pretty interesting though, over the years, the materials, the capacitors, the wire, um, everything changed. So earlier than 1967-ish, although I've seen it all the way back to mid early 66, it changed over to like a, a PVC coated wire. Um, and before that, it was all cloth. That doesn't matter. A lot of people want to say that it does, but it doesn't. The bottom line is Fender, and you'll see this if you do a lot of research of history of Fender stuff, it will say he used whatever was available. He was working on a guitar that was modular and that could be replaced each part and repaired and cheap to build. I don't think he pretty much cared what went into it as far as wire, where the caps came from, cap suppliers changed, values changed, and if you do a lot of deep research on this, it'll be like, what was available, depending on availability, right? So before there was PVC wire, there was no cloth wire. Your house was wired with cloth, or there was no PVC wire. There was, your, your house was wired with cloth, everything was wired with cloth, until uh, the, World War II, basically, when they started building submarines, they had to come up with something, so they came up with PVC. But it was really only like military grade stuff, like it wasn't into consumer stuff, like ABS and PVC, all that stuff was later uh, in time. So that's why you don't see it in a consumer product, especially a guy who's trying to be cheap, until way later. CBS is like, we're trying to save money, we're gonna use PVC, because now, it's consumer available. Does it matter what you use in your guitar as far as what you wire it up with? Absolutely not. Does the voltage of the caps matter? Absolutely not. We have a whole video about um, the materials of the caps themselves. Does that matter? Nah, nah. I mean, just, just play the guitar. Now there's a whole bunch of other modern things we can do. There's series wiring, there's out of phase stuff, there's all kinds of stuff like that. I want to do probably two other videos, wouldn't you think? Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll rip the neck pickup out of this, we'll make it into an Esquire, maybe we'll do like an Esquire wiring video. What do you, tell me what you think of that. And then maybe we'll do another one where we do like modern wiring with series and out of phase and and that kind of stuff. I think it'd be super fun. I'll tell you what, before we let you go, let's go ahead and go through some viewers' comments from the last video. One thing, I already purchased the 40,000 subscriber giveaway item. It is very cool. It is very cool. It is so cool, in fact, that it is on pre-order because it's not even out yet. We're talking super, super cool. I already ordered that. Uh, the other thing is, we've got a, a giveaway coming up. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just announce it right now. If you comment in this video, over the next couple, I'll do the same thing where we say it. This is going to be a global one, okay? So anywhere in the world um, that it's legal, okay? We're just going to say that it's legal. We're giving away a, a guitar maintenance kit. So it's going to come with a fret polishing kit from Lizard Spit. It's going to come with some polish. It's going to come with uh, a Cruise Tools Toolkit. It's going to come with a Korg Tuner. And it's also going to come with uh, a Hercules um, neck rest. So you'll have everything you need to do to do all the work on your guitar. Because as we come out with this guitar maintenance and setup series that I'm working on, uh, you're going to need that stuff. It's going to be pretty awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and get to some viewer comments. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, since my key light battery died uh, and the video's already kind of long, we'll go ahead and leave some comments for the next video. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you share it, uh, make sure you comment below, let me know what your favorite of these three is, and if we're going to do like a Telemods video, uh, let me know what ones you would be interested in seeing, because that would be really super cool. Um, yeah, do all the things. Hit the bell, subscribe, share, uh, patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, and make sure you check out my other YouTube channel. Uh, there'll be a link to it in the description because we're doing a bunch of stuff that's not quite on the subject matter of this stuff, but I think you'll still dig it. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time.